Welcome back to the smallest blacksmith shop in all of the realm as we continue to try to be the best smiths we can. It's now Jen's turn. Okay, her second turn. First thing she does, all this stuff gets refined. Okay, so now she's got some iron. All right, she's got two gold, iron and silver, all refined, all ready to work with. Oh, by the way, the other thing, at the end of my turn, after I filled my hand up, the last thing that happens is this untaps. Now, any player who wants to buy my sapphire can buy it for the full price of 16. If they don't, when it comes back to re on my next turn, I can sell it to town for the low price because the town is cheap. I could sell it and make eight bucks, which is eight points. You can make a lot of points just selling refined goods to the warehouse. And the interesting thing is, once it's in the warehouse, any player can buy it from the warehouse. Now, um, whenever you buy from the town, you have to pay full price, so we'd have to buy it from 16. But the interesting thing is, if Jen buys it from me for 16, that's a transfer of wealth. She's losing 16 points and giving me 16 points. If she waits till later and buys it from the warehouse, she'll still lose 16, but the 16 will go to the bank, so she won't transfer that wealth. But the problem is, if, you, if Jen buys from me, it, it comes over refined immediately into her workshop because she knows I did fine work. But if, it, if I sell this to the warehouse, its quality drops. It gets banged up, it gets thrown in a hopper somewhere. And if Jen buys from the warehouse, it doesn't go into her workshop, it goes into her hand, which means when she plays it later, it'll come in unrefined. So that's the interesting thing. If you buy from your opponent, you're giving them points, but you get access to the goods immediately. If you buy from the warehouse, you're not giving points to anybody, but um, you have to wait and waste time refining stuff further because the warehouse bangs things up really bad. All right, they just don't take good care of stuff. Uh, they're not quality artisans like us. But anyway, so that was the end of my turn. It is Jen's turn now. Jen sees she cannot afford this sapphire. Um, and remember, she wanted a gem. If she could, she might have just tried to buy it from me, but it doesn't matter because Jen found herself an emerald. Although this is the interesting thing. So Jen wants to build her vice. She's got the iron that's processed. If she had, a, or, or she has the refined ore, iron. If she had a refined gem, she could build this right now and build it twice as fast, because otherwise she's going to have to wait. Because right, okay, she's got one, two, three, four. Um, she's going to put this unrefined emerald. So five of her slots in her shop or workshop are full. Next turn, this will be refined, and then she can use the gem plus the iron to build the vise. And then after that, she can use the vise to build the tongs. If Jen had the money, if she had one more dollar, she would seriously, seriously consider buying this sapphire from me, even though she's transferring a huge amount of points, because that means she can get this vice built that much faster. And now here's the thing. Um, well, the problem is she can't have the money. She doesn't need the silver. Nothing she needs to build right now costs silver. Um, so she could say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take this. I, I spent some time refining it. I'm going to put it in my shop. She could sell it to the warehouse for two. That would give her the money she needs. But remember, it's tapped. She won't be able to buy, sell this until next turn. So Jen does not have a way to make the other dollar she needs to buy my sapphire. If she could, she would, so she could get this vice built that much faster, because this is a race. We are trying to build stuff as fast as possible. Because once either of these two decks is emptied out, that triggers the end of the game right there. So the more stuff you built, even it, it, it's worth it to Jen to transfer 16 points. That's a 32 point swap effectively. But the sooner she gets this, the sooner she she will be able to leverage um, never needing iron again to build other stuff. Um, which means she could build the tongs that much faster, which means she could build this big 75 pointer that much faster. But as it is, she doesn't have the cast. Otherwise, she would totally buy from me. All right, so she has put this out. What else is she going to do? She will go on ahead and right, she's got one, two, three, four, five. Now remember, she wants to empty her hand out so she'll be able to draw four cards because she needs to go mining a lot to be able to find this particular rune. This is a frost rune for the Gilded Warden armor. She needs to find a frost rune. There aren't very many. She's going to need to do a lot of mining to find that, so she wants to be able to draw four cards. Plus, she needs to find a moon gem. That's going to be hard to find, too. So she needs to get more cards out of her hand. She'll go on ahead this um, lightning rune. She could put this in her shop, but the interesting thing about runes is you don't have to spend time refining them. They come into play fully ready to go. Jen is going to take this and put this in her market. 
Um, just to get it out of the way, because she doesn't need to refine it, she'll take this gold and put it over here unrefined. So now she's got two refined gold and one unrefined gold. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's got room for one more item in her shop, or in her workshop. And she wants to get rid of one more item, so she can draw some more. And now, interesting thing, she could put any of these in her market as well, at which point, you know, I could buy these from her. I could buy, this represents the plans to build this king's armor, and I could buy it from her for 21 points. If she puts this here and I don't buy it, when it untaps, she could then decide just to discard it. The town will never buy plans from us, but we can buy plans from each other, um, you know, because Jen might have a plan that she just doesn't want to build. She doesn't have the resource, doesn't think it's worth it. She puts it over here in the shop, somebody else buys from her, she makes some money, the other player starts building the thing. There's a lot of synergy between players in this game. But anyway, Jen, let's see, well, she knows she's going to buy this vi build this vice. She'll go on ahead and put it in her workshop um, over here with the unrefined gem. Now, or actually, well, these things all stack together mean that this is effectively one project. This cannot be broken up. So she'll just put this off here by its, uh, you know. So Jen's workshop is full. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She cannot put anything more in her workshop to make room in her hand. She put something for sale in her market, and now she can draw back up. And she's going to start looking for moon gems and frost uh, runes. Show me what you got. More gold. That's not great. Gold. She doesn't need that. Uh, emerald, all right. So here's the thing. She could keep going mining, but she's looking for really rare stuff. Now that she's got a bunch of other... Well, hey, this is nice. She got two gold. She needs the gold for this armor. Um, she also needs mithril. She cannot build these tongs without mithril. So I think she'll just keep going to hopefully find some mithril. Arr, come on, our mithril. No, more gold. She has all the gold in the world. That's not great. All right. Anyway, her turn is over. She didn't get what she wanted when she went mining. There's a lot of luck of the draw of mining. And it's interesting. Often, you go mining looking for what you think you want to build. You can't find it. But you end up finding a lot of resources. At that point, it's probably worth going to the guild and see if you can get a project that, re that leverages the resources you have instead of futilely going and mining for the stuff you don't have. This is also a game of optimization and you know one bird in the hand versus two in the bush types of decision making. So anyway, that was Jen's turn. It is my turn again. I will refine this sapphire. I'll refine both of these iron. Okay, first thing you do is you refine your stuff. Then I will complete my first project. My great sword is built! Hooray! Okay, so this stuff goes to the discard pile, and I'm going to sell this for 28 gold. I just made 25, 26, 27, 28 points. Yeah! I just made so much money, I could easily afford to buy Jen's lightning room. But I don't need it. I don't have a project that needs it. Anyway, also, by clearing that out, I've just cleared up a lot of space in my workshop. So I've got no more projects that are on the go. So now we go to actions. I've got this two refined iron. I needed that iron to get Grimgar hired. So let's uh, work, work on the project of hiring this guy. He has a signing bonus of two iron. So one, two, three, four, five. I've got two more spaces in my workshop. Now, I could play this iron and refine it, but I'd rather wait because Grimgar means I can play this and have it refined right off the bat. Um, but let's go on ahead and start refining this silver and refining this ruby. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My workshop is full once more. Two unrefined things, a refined sapphire, refined mithril. All right. And again, I'm only going to get to draw three cards, which is very wasteful unless I make room for one of these. How can I do that? I don't want to get rid of the iron because I want to take advantage of him. I, these are both great plans, so I don't think I want to do them. So, well, you know what? This is now untapped, so I think Jen didn't buy it for me. I'm going to sell it to the warehouse for eight. I just made eight more points. And it's still available to Jen. And now if Jen wants to buy it, she can still pay 16, not have to give me money, but it will come in unrefined and she'll have to refine it if she ever wants to get it later. So I just made some more cash. Um, but I, my, stand, my hand is still full. i got to put something in my market so I can draw up. Um, let's see. I need the mithril, and I'm going to need to find some more gold so to build this thing. Do I care about the thieves' tools that much? I mean, it's only one point, or it's only five points. But, I mean, heck, it's this iron and that right off the bat. So, 
You know what? I mean, Jen didn't buy my last Sapphire. Let's go on ahead and put this Sapphire in the market as well. And if Jen doesn't buy it, hey, I'll just go on ahead and sell it for another eight bucks and make eight more points next round. All right, so that was the end of my turn. At the end of my turn, um, this untapped, so it's available for purchase. Oh, wait. Oh, right, because I did that, because now I can put something in the market. I'll go on ahead and put this Mithril Plate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, now, I can't build this yet, um, but it's... Um, you know, I mean, no one can take it from me. Jen could not buy this out from under me. If I put this in the market, Jen might have bought it for six. Because, you know, I can see she's got gold. I don't know if she has mithril or not. But anyway, I just got this on my hand. So I'm down to two cards in my hand. And now I can draw four. And I need to find... Let's see. To build this, I need mithril. I've got the mithril. I need gold. I'm going to go mining for gold. See if I can find some. All right, I got a lightning rune. Don't need that. I got more iron. Eh. And more iron, nah. okay, I could keep going for gold, but again, gold is rare. So instead, I think I'll go to the guild and see if I can get a better project that makes use of what I want. Okay, it's another mithril piece of armor. It's a shirt. I need more mithril. So now I'm kind of doubling down on mithril. That's not great. Okay, that was the end of my turn. Jen's turn now. Okay. So, oh, by the way, if I wanted to, I could have bought Jen's lightning rune. I didn't need it. I don't have anything that requires a lightning rune. Heck, I have my own if I need it. Anyway, though, Jen's turn. She'll refine this gold. She'll refine this gem. She had no project she was working on, so now her turn starts proper. First of all, she will start working on this vice, which requires iron and gem. Next turn, this will be built, and she'll start getting the iron discount on for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Her workshop is still full, so she cannot. Her hand is full of stuff as well, so she. You know, if she doesn't do something, she won't get to draw any cards, and that's not good. So, what is she going to do with all this stuff? Well, let's see. She knows, actually, interestingly, to build these things, she knows she needs gold. She's got three gold right here waiting. But right now, the gold isn't doing anything, so she could put it in her market. She's got three more slots to put stuff in her market, and then hopefully nobody buys it from her. I probably won't buy it from her. Although, Jen can see that I want gold because I have a mithril plate. So maybe it makes sense for Jen to get a little bit of cash. She needs to make space anyway. So she'll go ahead and transfer some gold. Now she's got one more space here. But she wants to make space to, to be able to draw more cards. If you're not drawing cards, you're static. You're not getting anything done. So anyway, so uh, there's some refined gold Jen has put up for sale. Man, all this gold she's got. It's just not great. Um... Yeah, she doesn't need any of this um, unrefined gold that's in her hand because for her two projects, she needs three gold, period. Maybe she should not put this in her market. And she could just go on ahead and put all three of these unrefined gold in the market. And then next turn, when it untaps, she could sell it for one, two, three, four, five, six. She could just make six points. And um, right, so she'll just do that. Now, she still got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So. What's she going to do? She still wants to be able to draw four cards. She can only draw three because of her hand. That's why you can see it's really nice to increase your hand size. Certain apprentices will make your hand bigger. So Jen needs a little bit more room to be able to draw. I think Jen will sell her lightning rune to the town and she'll make eight. Same way I sent my, sold my sapphire. Jen just made eight points. And now that means Jen's got enough money to start buying from me if anything comes up. And another interesting thing has happened. So, if either of us, it reminds us right here, if either of us wants to buy from the warehouse, we have to pay the full price. Either of these are 16. But, the deeper something is, the more it costs. This sapphire actually costs 17 because there's a card on top. Over time, if more and more and more stuff gets sold to the warehouse, and it will, by the end of the game, this warehouse will be full of stuff we didn't need. Stuff that is older in the warehouse gets more and more expensive. This would now cost 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So, the, the deeper it's buried under all the... I mean, because the warehouse, they, like I said, they're terrible with their stuff. They just throw them in bins and forget about it. So, the deeper it is, the more it's lost, the more you have to pay for them to go find the thing. And then when you get the thing, it's unrefined and you have to spend time refining it. Anyway, though. So, now, Jen's got one more space. She could go on ahead and put this unrefined ruby up here. But rubies are rare. I think she'll go on ahead and put this refined silver. Because right now, she has no use for this silver at all. So, and then she'll start refining, this ruby is unrefined, so she'll start refining it so it'll double in value. All right. And now she's down to two cards. She has found a way to make room, but she has given me a lot of buying opportunities. So she's going to draw back up. Next turn she'll finish this, and she's going to want to start making the tongs. She's got the gold. She needs mithril. Let's go mining for mithril. All righty. 
Um, boom! There, she got it. So she's got the mithril and the gold, and she doesn't need the iron because she will have a vice. So let's get let's get her another project. Let's see what she gets. Uh, an anvil. Wow. So this anvil again. She's not going to need iron. She needs more mithril, and she's got the gold. The, although remember, you can only have two tools. Once you've built your two tools, that's it. Although you can build tools not to have for more powers, but just to sell for points. So Jen wants more mithril now, because uh, she's got all the gold she needs. Let's go digging for more mithril. Nope, we got a thunder rune, and Jen needs a she needs a frost rune. All right. So she mining. Let's go in mining again for a third, and it's some more gold. She is the gold queen. She does not need all this gold. Let's go one more, one more, and more silver. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, actually, I'm sorry, I dug too far. Jen's done. That was her turn. Okay, my turn now. Yay! Let's finish. All right, first of all, uh, I'm going to refine and refine these things. Yeah, baby. So I've got some silver. I've got refined silver, gold, mithril. And that means I'm going to be able to work on this mithril plate. No, I need gold for that. I got a plan for that. Okay. And um, I complete this project, which frees up three slots. And I now have a helper. Every time I play iron, it comes in refined. So it saves me time. These get discarded. And that's all he does. He doesn't score me points or anything else. Apprentices are interesting. Um, you know, they're a big investment, and you've really got to let, work hard to leverage them to make them pay off. So this means I implicitly want projects that require iron so I can leverage this guy. But anyway, so I refined. I finished a project. Now we're going to go. And I want to build this mithril plate. I've got the refined mithril. I don't have the gold. I don't have the gold in my hand. Somehow Jen keeps getting all the gold. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend some cash. I'm going to go shopping. I'm not going to buy lightning or sapphire from the warehouse. I'm going to buy some gold from Jen. It, now, I wish she had sold her refined gold, because if she did, it would cost me three instead of two. It only cost me one more buck. But we'd come over here refined, and I could do this mithril plate immediately. But unfortunately, it's unrefined. So I'm going to buy this. I'm going to pay Jen two bucks. So, um, right. Here, I will give her two, and I keep one in change. So I just transferred some cash. I now have, but unfortunately, it won't be unrefined until next turn. Then I could build the mithril plate. And Jen, that's why she did not put her refined gold here, because she saw that I would benefit her. She put her unrefined gold, so at least if, if she was going to benefit me, she was going to do it in a slow way. All right, so Jen made a couple of points. I lost a couple of points. I've got the gold I need. I didn't have to go mining for it. And let's see, I've still got one, two, three, four, five. I've got two more spaces in my workshop. Let's go on ahead and sell this sapphire, because I still don't need that rune for anything. And if I need it later, I can always buy it back. So I'll make eight more bucks, five, six, seven, eight. I'm rich, I tells you. It's all about making that money. And all righty. So I've got a lot of stuff. Now, the interesting thing is these iron, if I put them into my workshop, they're immediately refined thanks to Grimgar. So actually, that's pretty cool. One, two, three, four, five. Let's put some iron in my shop. It comes in refined thanks to Grimgar. And let's put these thieves tools in my shop, which um, need refined iron. So this project is already on the go. I, I just was able to make to build this really fast. Although now my shop is completely full of stuff and I've got no more room for any business. Um, but I've got four stuff in my hand. No, and I want to draw more cards because uh, I need somewhere to find some more mithril. Mithril is proving to be difficult to find. Jen didn't give me any mithril to buy. So what am I going to do? Hmm, seems like silver is all over the place. I'm going to go on ahead and transfer this silver to sell. I'm going to keep my mithril. I don't need this ruby. So, but you know what? I don't need this lightning either. So I'll just play this directly and I'll um, transfer this refined ruby directly. All right. And so that's it. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, automatically refined, seven, automatically refined. All right, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So that was a very efficient turn. Although interestingly, now I've only got one card in my hand. So I didn't have to put that lightning rune out there. But what the heck? I mean, I, you know, the fa sooner I sell this stuff, the better. And so far, I haven't had a project that needs any of these things. And I can see Jen's got a ruby, so I know she's not going to buy mine. I could always. I'm not required to sell this. If Jen doesn't buy this, it just stays in my market, taking up space there. I can always transfer it back to my, um, to my workshop if I need to. I know Jen's not going to buy it. I know there's plenty of lightning available. Jen's got 
Um, well, Jen doesn't have silver, but I, I don't need any silver. Hmm. I'll just leave it. All right, because there's more opportunities to sell stuff later. So that's the end of my turn. So all these things are now three of my four spa spaces in the market are filled up. Oh, by the way, all of these were untapped at the end of Jen's turn as a reminder that I could have bought these things. I didn't need any more, though. So now I get to draw four, which means I won't even fill up my full hand. Now, what is it I'm going looking for? I've got the mithril. I've got the gold. This mithril and this gold will let me build that armor. Um, oh, but I need more mithril. So let's, let's go 50-50. Let's go mining and go um, guild shopping. Silver? No. Let's get something. Ooh, ooh. Uh, hey, a repair, to repair this helmet, I need some silver. I just got some silver. Or I can take my own silver back out of the market. Let's try and find some mithril. Nope, more iron, which comes in. And let's see what another project I can get. Okay, uh, my, I can have two apprentices. This guy, which again, needs mithril. Mithril is proving to be difficult. Mithril and gold. Um, if I have him, when, um, when I sell metals to the warehouse, I can sell them for their full price and not their reduced price. So uh, that's, that's nice, it's not huge, but if I get a lot of metal and I just sell it, I can double the, my income thanks to good old Duan. I guess because, I don't know, he has contacts and you know, he knows a guy who knows a guy who runs the warehouse, something like that. Anyway, so I'm done drawing. It is now Jen's turn. First of all, she will refine her ruby. Everything else, everything else she's got is refined. She will complete her first project at long last, um, a, a vice. Okay, so she could sell this for 22 points, but instead she is going to have her first functional tool. And so from now on, her projects do not, she never wants to see iron again because she automatically generates iron. So that's it, and now she's got a whole handful of stuff. And right, next up she wanted to start building her tongs, but she has not found mithril at all. Mithril, um, and she needs mithril for her anvil and, and mithril for her tongs. Oh, wait, yes she has. I forgot, she did. Let's start refining that mithril. Or mithril. So one, two, three, four, five. She's got space for two more stuff, two more things. Um, let's see here. So now ultimately she'd like, and she wants to hold on to all her gold. She needs three gold for these things. But while well, she's waiting to get the moon gem and the frost rune, um, you know, all this gold is just wasting space, taking up space. And these plans are taking up space too. Either they take up space in her hand, or they take up space in her workshop, or they take up space in her... So Jen is starting to run out of space, and this is where the decisions start getting tougher and tougher and tougher. Because at some point or other, you just have to decide, you know what, I give up. I'm never going to get this thing built. I'm never going to find the moon gem I need. Um, I might as well go on ahead and put it up here. And um, either an opponent will buy it from me for 21 points, because they do have the moon gem, or they do, or they think they can get it. So they might buy it from me, and hey, at least I make 21 points off of this, but they buy it because they're hoping to make 75 points. Or once it's untapped on a future turn, I can just discard it to get rid of it, because this is the only way to jettison cards. It takes time um, to, uh, to find a new home for these things. But anyway, so Jen's getting ready. She's uh, next turn, so she might as well, she's planning on building these tongs. She'll get them out of her hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's got room for one more thing in her warehouse. She might as well start refining this gold uh, to make it worth more points. And she will put this Thunder Rune for sale in her market. She's uh, gone to two cards. Now she could sell these things. Or, you know, and make some points off the warehouse. But, you know, she's got space. She can always sell them later. She's done. She's still got two hands. Let's go digging. She desperately needs this frost rune and this moon gem. And she's got to decide sooner or later to give up on it if she can't find these things. Another thunder rune. Ah, come on. Although, remember, the runes, they're quick and easy to sell. A, more gold. Like, she certainly owns all the gold. Another thunder rune. Oh, my gosh. All right. She's got so, all this gold. Maybe it's time to give up on this and see if she can get a better project. Maybe one that needs a lot of gold. Um, a silver shirt. This is something she can get built right away. She's got the silver. If I don't buy the silver out from underneath her, she can reclaim it, bring it back to her workshop, and use her ruby and make this for 33 points. See, that's the thing. You can. It's, it's, it's a folly to just keep digging and hoping to get some rare gem so you can make the big ultimate thing. Often, you're better off, hey, I've got a bunch of stuff. 
What can I build with this? So that's Jen's turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Her turn is over. It's back to me, back to my turn. I will refine this gold and I will sell this project, the thieves tools. It wasn't much. It just made me five points. Can't complain though. Five points is five points. And, um, all right, and so Jen can sell all of these things in her market. I could sell any of those things in my market and I'm ready to go. I've got this new guy. I could use my mithril plus this gold to recruit him so I can sell metals and make more money. Um, or I've got the mithril and the silver. So to do that, I think I'm gonna bring the silver, transfer it back down here, silver and gold and the mithril shirt. So here's a project, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. My workshop is full. Um, let's see, I can make the mithril shirt or I can make the mithril plate. The mithril plate's worth more. Let's make that thing instead. It needs gold and mithril. All right, there we go. So this is a completed project. Now I just need some more mithril for that. So this is not an active project yet. So heck, I didn't have to even bring the silver down. I could have left it up here. Hmm. So I need more mithril for this guy. I've got iron I can put into play immediately and then sell the, I mean, iron's worth nothing. Or, or, or that silver, hey, I could just go on ahead and, um, and work on this $7 job so, do I forget about the mithril shirt? Because mithril is hard to find. I need it for my second apprentice. And do I forget about that and just start repairing this helmet with my own silver? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which means I don't have room in my warehouse, but I can just go on ahead and take one of my iron and put it up here for sale in the shop. So, hey, I've got two projects I'm working on, two goods, and mm, let's see, I might need more iron later. Although, heck, I've got iron in my hand, so let's go on ahead and try and sell this iron. Or heck, maybe Jen needs... Oh, I know Jen doesn't need iron because she's got a vice. She'll never buy iron from me. So anyway, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and let's start refining this silver, which I'm going to need for this silver shirt, this mithril shirt. Okay, and then I'm going to draw back up and so on. But you know what, folks? I think I'm going to... And then these will be available for sale. I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of how the game works. There's... Um, three ways the game can end can trigger. If somebody empty, if the guild deck gets emptied out, the mine deck gets emptied out, or if any player successfully builds, where, where was the example? Successfully builds four of these epic king's items. They come, there's armor, there's shields, and there's weapons. If a player builds four of these, that triggers the end of the game as well. But it's tough to build these. Well, it's tough for two reasons. One, it's tough because you um, say, oh, by the way, oh, this is going to get easier for Jen. Once she makes the anvil, she doesn't need the moon gem. Then she could build this with only a frost gem. All she's got to do is find a frost rune. But anyway, building these are tough because you need the extra things, although it's worth it because they're worth a lot of points. But when you, when you, as you saw, when I built these thieves tools and the great sword, they just got discarded. They, I sold them someplace. The cards got discarded. When you successfully build one of these, you have to have it take up space in your market. No one will buy from you. You put it here face down and now my market only has three spaces. So I've got less space to store stuff in the future. If I build a second king's item, then I've only got two spaces in my market. If I build all four king's items, well, that must have been tough I, because I was running out of spaces to sell things and whatnot. So that could be very, very tough as well. But um, it, building these things is a way to trigger the end of the game as well. You definitely need tools to do it, etc., etc. But the, another interesting thing, too, is at the end of the game, let's see, there's a reminder on the backside of our player turn order. At the end of the game, after we do some cleanup, um, let's see, anything we've got in the market, we still sell and make some money off of that. Any king's items that we had sold, that we had made, we reveal what they are, we score the points there, and there are three classes of things. Like I said, there's armor, shields, and weapons. Whoever made the most valuable armor, the most valuable shield, and the most valuable king's weapon scores an additional 25 points. So there are 75 bonus points to be had if you are if you build the best. But that's why you keep it secret till the end of the game. If I build, if Jen builds this, it's potentially not only worth 75, but an additional 25 if nobody builds better armor than her. So this is 100 points. So you can see why it might be worth holding on to and continuing to mine to try and find one of those frost runes. Because once Jen gets her tongs built, she doesn't need to find the moon gem. Gold, she's got all the gold she needs. Um, she would just need to find that frost rune. And who knows, maybe at some point I'll find a frost rune, have no use for it, and put it for sale. If that happens, I guarantee 
currency. The instant that happens, Jen will snap it up and finish this. Um, and that, folks, is what Dwarven Smithy is all about. Now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.